one of the first things that I would like to mention is um, the fact that our product is um, mainly cheese and also um, soybean meal. Uh -huh. uh, and in that way, we know that the array soybean meal has a great digestibility of amino acids. On top of that, the cheese itself, it has a very similar type of protein that if we think about milk. So it's highly digestible protein to start with. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we explore the science behind swine nutrition. I'm your host, Jorge Estrada, and today in our podcast we have Dr. Diego Lopez, who is currently an assistant professor of feed science at Kansas State University. Today, we will be discussing the nutritional value of a new source of cheese cow product fair to women pigs. Dr. Lopez, welcome to the podcast and congratulations on your new appointment at Kansas State. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Before we dig into today's topic, could you please maybe share a little bit of your background with our audience? Thank you, Dr. Stra, and obviously thank you for having me. I'm very thrilled to be here to share some of the work that we conducted before uh, in the with relationships with the uh, University of Illinois. Uh, so. My background is that I was born in Colombia. I did my bachelor's in animal science there in university, uh, National University of Colombia. Then I came to the United States to work with Dr. Stein in uh, University of Illinois, where I also got my master's. Uh, then I worked for Keys Manufacturing uh, for a couple of years before I decided to go back into academia to complete my PhD. And as you mentioned, uh, I just recently became an uh, assistant professor in the Department of Green Science at Kansas State University. Have you considered adding cheese to your feed? Let us help. Keys Manufacturing is a family-owned and operated business, conveniently located in central Illinois. We have been producing Pro 88 cheese powder since 1997. Pro 88 is a high quality source of protein and milk fat. Our cheese powder is research proven to contribute to a smooth transition in early weaning pigs, being highly palatable, increasing feed intake, as well as delivering easily digestible nutrients. Check us out at keysmanufacturing.com for more information and links to our research. We look forward to helping you maximize your feed. Well, we're happy to have you here, uh, Diego. So let's 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 dig into this. So you know, we're talking about this new cheese cow product, and and of course, you know, in the U.S. with so much the production that there is around, there is a lot of uh, potential opportunities using products like this to feed uh, pigs, right? So, um, what factors in this cheese cow product make it, you know, a better or an alternative to enzyme treated soybean meal or fish meal or, you know, what limitations, maybe what trade-off, you know, should producers or nutritionists consider when um, thinking about this product? Absolutely. So um, one of the first things that I would like to mention is um, the fact that our product is um, mainly cheese and also um, soybean meal. Uh -huh. uh, and in that way, we know that the array soybean meal has a great digestibility of amino acids. On top of that, the cheese itself, it has a very similar type of protein that if we think about milk. So it's highly digestible protein to start with. Um, the content of fiber because of the presence of the cheese might also decrease a little bit. So that might also increase the digestibility of some nutrients. And on top of all of that, um, this product also has an 18% of fat. And we know that when we have a higher uh, proportion of fat in the diet, it might slow down a little bit the passage rate in the small intestine and therefore increasing the capacity for digestibility. So that's kind of like some of the main points that make this product a little bit more um, digestible when it comes to amino acids and the content itself of energy that uh, is superior to other products. Um, also contribute to some of that nutritional value. Awesome. So, and maybe based on the experiments that, that you conducted with the product, you know, what inclusion levels of this cup product would be recommended for, especially for wind pigs? And, you know, in what situations, 
it might not be advisable to use it, if, if any, right? Yeah, so in this study, we actually have three different experiments, right? Uh, the first two were just aimed to kind of give us a good idea of what is the nutritional value and how digestible the product is. In the second portion of the study, uh, or one of the three uh, experiments, we also use uh, some pigs to kind of like take a look at the growth performance um, and how they did with the inclusion, the increasing inclusion by replacing other sources of highly digestible protein uh, in winning pigs. And what we observe is that we were able to reach um, up to 14% of inclusion with uh, no negative effects or not decreasing performance for the animals. Now, with that being said, maybe some of the really um, important considerations when including this product is the cost. Uh, we know that most of the time we will love to include some of these uh, ingredients in higher proportions because they are really good for, for our pigs. But in reality, the cost kind of, is kind of like what it stops us from doing that. So up to 14% from the nutritional point of view, perfect. And then for the cost and how much you can include it to stay profitable, maybe that's a different discussion that you have to have with your nutritionist. And maybe following up a little bit with that same topic, um, is there any other considerations? I mean, from the from the practical standpoint, when a nutritionist is considering to include this kind of product in the diet, is there any other you know practical considerations? I, I, I don't know. I mean, for example, from the manufacturing standpoint, particle size of the product, uh, you know the shelf life of the product at the at the feed mill level. What else can you tell us about, about this product in order to actually get it used in, in swine diets? Absolutely. So um, this comes also from like experience working with the product, uh, not so much from the from the um, study. But one thing that we have to keep in mind is the flowability of the product. Uh, it is a really fine dust. Uh, a powder, sorry, and that might be complicated when you're um, mixing the diet or when you get to the feeder if the inclusion is too high. Um, another thing that you can think about and is something that maybe we realize by doing the experiments in the way that we did is that we formulated all the diets beforehand, even before we have all the digestibility results. And that led to some underestimations or overestimations of some nutrients. That was one of the reasons why we observed the results of uh, BUN uh, that we observed. In some of the pigs that were fed the um, Pro-88 product, um, in that particular case, we had a lower BUN, uh, which could be a result of us underestimating how much digestibility of the amino acids had or how high the energy or how digestible the energy was in the product. So that, that balance of energy and protein is very important. Uh, we all are aware of that. And if this shows anything is that we need accurate numbers in the moment of formulating a diet. So we have the best value out of those uh, new ingredients and can do um, a better job formulating our diets. Excellent. I think, you know, that, that hits all the points that we kind of wanted to learn from you today. And so, Dr. Lopez, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me again. It was a pleasure and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Bread Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us some comments and join us in our next episode.